Hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McGandrews from Dread Central, and I am here today with Nyla Anukshuk, who is the director of Slash. Hey, I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? Nyla, I'd love to hear from you first for maybe our watchers who are familiar with Slashback. Could you just tell us a little bit about what the movie is? Sure. Uh, so Slashback is a kind of coming of age horror sci-fi movie about a group of teenage girls in a remote Arctic community as they take on this alien invasion. Hell yeah. So have you grown up a horror fan? Like, were you always a horror fan? Yeah, I, that's kind of how I got into movies was it was oh, first cool. as a fan. Um, and uh, I loved horror uh, really since I was a kid. My mom was a big horror fan, loved Hitchcock. And um, so I watched movies like The Birds and Psycho way before I was probably it, it was appropriate. Um, but it, I think that that's also kind of what got me hooked is this like feeling that you were getting away with something by, by, by watching, watching these movies. And not only that, my parents seemed to encourage it. Um, <laughs> and so it was, <laughs> it was just really fun. And, and in the process of making this movie and getting to work with teenagers um, who are figuring out who they were and, and uh, how their indigeneity fits into all of that. It was really fun for me to be thinking about myself at that age. And, and for me, a big part of my, who I was and how I fit in was with movies and scary movies. So to be able to, to be spending um, uh, the summer with these girls and, and making this movie that both felt familiar in a way um, in this place that I loved was really special. And so what was it like finding this cast? Because your cast of teenage girls, they're incredible and I, they're all pretty new to acting, correct? Yeah, they had never acted before. And so it was um, when I made the movie or had this idea for the movie, I knew um, that, well, it, it was going to be that I wanted to take place in Pang, this beautiful place. And the community of Pang um, has Inuit living there, mostly. <laughs> There's not a lot of Kalunat, the white, white people. Um, so I knew that I would, to have the movie be authentic to this place, the cast should be Inuk, and by nature of that, it was meaning we were going to go out and find people, because we didn't have you know, these teenage stars or, or um, even casting agents that we could necessarily look to. Um, so we uh, held acting workshops and found young people that were interested in coming out and taking part in those, and um, and then I, and we shot this proof of concept first with a lot of the actors that ended up being in the movie. And, and so it did kind of feel a little like me and this group of kids and had this idea and just this belief that we could somehow pull it off. And then we had to go and find the support and the, and the producers and all the help to kind of make it happen. But it did kind of start with it, with us. <laughs> With you, so with the, say a lot of the actors you had kind of have been there with you from the very beginning. Yeah, and then definitely, then when we were writing the script and like um, with the support of our producers and I had Ryan Cavan, my co-writer, we were, we were spending time with a lot of the cast. And so we would be writing and then we would go out voting or, um, going to cabins with some of the, the young actors and we would just hear them talking about boys and the gossip and uh, all of the teenage drama and so it was really kind of special to kind of see the dynamics of of the group and the friendships and um and uh and then what we realized was like, no matter what happens, these girls will still be talking about boys so no, through, throughout. And, um, and so uh, getting to actually, um, it, it felt like a very organic process with the cast. Um, and not that the cast are like the characters or someone like Tassiana who came on later, um, the, the, then the film was already written when she came on. Um, but it was great to see kind of how, you know, in, in, there's certain elements from, from their own lives that made its way into the movie. Incredible. And 
so a huge part of Slashback is, you know, being a part of an indigenous community and looking at this indigenous community. And it's so it's a badass movie, but I also think what's really awesome about this movie is it's working towards kind of a decolonization of the horror genre, which is so white and European. And I wanted to hear more from you about, you know, taking a genre that is known for being that very way and making it so unapologetically indigenous from like her wearing her, her leather jacket about stolen land and just like, pushing it into people's faces in a way that it's necessary. Like, what are you hoping people who watch this movie like get from it in terms of not only it being like a badass movie coming of age story, but about being an indigenous story about indigenous girls? Yeah, um, it was, that was really important to me. In Canada, we have a lot of conversations within the indigenous screen community, which is a tight knit community and very supportive. Yeah. Um, about what it means uh, for authentic representation and and uh, capacity building work within our communities and and um, and so I've got you know a lot of uh, amazing friends that are creating their own projects and and doing you know romantic comedies set on the res and and really kind of pushing you know the idea of, like really kind of changing the idea of what indigenous cinema means. Um, and, uh, but then it's also, you know, we, these are the places that we, we come from where our families are. We, yeah. it's important for us to be, um, able to go back and, and feel like we're, um, it, you know, even when in the, it, it's kind of, um, interesting to, to, to just be kind of exploring these themes, um, and then also it was it, it was important to me and my co-writer to try and be making a story that felt empowering um, to these girls and this place. And and when I was talking to the cast, we did have lots of conversations about language and the shame that would kind of bubble up in their language um, and what that meant, um, what it means when they say, oh, that's so, you know, and they mean it in a negative way. And mm -hmm. and. Um, and that it was really important for us that we recognize the shameful language that we use, but then also work to, to, um, to be using prideful language when we talk about ourselves and where we come from. Because even if it's a journey to get to, and not all of us are there yet, we all agreed that it was important for us to, to at least want to be proud Indigenous women. Um, and so that, you know, it, it was... Um, it, it, a lot of a lot of those conversations were uh, challenging ones for for the cast and and um, for myself even. But it was um, and, and so even trying to find the um, the right group of kids that could take on even that challenge, doing the work, but then also um, the emotional work that comes with making a um, making something that comes from a place. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And I want us to go, before we wrap up, switch over to talking about the practical effects and kind of the practical aspect of the yeah. movie and the kind of the design that you made up for, for the creature and the kind of creatures that we see in this movie. Yeah, that was such a fun, fun process. And it happened over a few different stages with different creative collaborators. And so uh, initially it was, how do we make, how do we develop these creatures that are cool and aren't like other aliens that we've seen? And so yeah. Ryan Cabin and my co-writer and I, that we kind of figured out these aliens that take, that are made up of tentacles and they can kind of take on, on in different shapes and um, we'll basically take over the bodies of animals and wear their skins as disguises. And then, so that was, you know, this process with Ryan. And then I got to go and work with um, Troy James, this incredible contortionist to really try and figure out how, how would that move, how would you move if you were made up of tentacles? And um, he's double jointed and every joint and can do just the craziest things with his body. So we had a lot of fun figuring out what that would look like and then translating those movements into the other animal forms, even, even the bear that was CG. Um, we had a practical bear puppet made that Troy wore. Um, uh, mind you, I, it was totally crazy. And, and he would have to wear it bent over backwards, arched backwards, because that's how he can do his creepiest movements. And he can walk on his, uh, backwards like that 
uh, and do and jump on jump on things, move around. It's really terrifying. You can find his stuff online. Um, That's horrifying and, in the best way possible. A man in a bear puppet suit. Oh my! <laughs> yeah, and it ended up looking so crazy and really cool, but like also crazy. <laughs> So we replaced it with the CG bear, but kept his movements and and really drew from that for for the for the um, VFX and and then getting to um, when there were maybe two alien creatures in human form at once. We had another person, Ophelio, who would be learning some of the movements from Troy, but then also doing more of the stunt heavy work. Um, and so they would kind of, depending on what was needed, we'd, we'd work with the two men. Um, and that was such, such a fun process. Um, and then afterwards getting to work with two different teams of VFX um, designers to, uh, to create all of that additional work, enhancing the blood and the gore and, and all of those tentacles was, um, was again, just like another kind of creative thing with some, some really cool nerdy people. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much for making the time to chat with me today about Slashback. Thank I'm so you. excited for everyone to watch it. Thanks so much.